the study of evil, we're looking at misery, pain, and suffering. As we are now in our 32nd recording. And we'll pick up on 16 through 19 on pain, suffering, and <coughs> misery. And again, <coughs> forgive me for allergies. Uh. <coughs> uh. Pardon me. So, we need all 32 lessons on, on evil. Evil is a study that we need to get the broad picture of everything. Because evil can be a sin. Evil can be a sin in consequences. Evil may not be a sin and consequences. Even the Bible records why we're doing this study. In Job 2.10, but he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? Isaiah 45, 7, I form light, I create darkness, I make peace, and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. The Lord doesn't sin. God doesn't sin. <clears throat> Lamentations 3, 38, out of, the out of the mouth the Most High proceeds not evil and good. God's not going to lie. So we need to look at evil what it is, what it isn't. <clears throat> we need to look at evil as far as if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And we need to look at evil as why did it happen? What on earth happened? How did it happen? And the consequences it can be because you sin, and you reap what you sow. Somebody else sin, and you get consequences. So pain, misery, and suffering. <clears throat> Second Samuel seventeen fourteen. And Absalom, and all the men of Israel said, "The counsel of Hushai the Archite is better than the counsel of Ethel." For the Lord had appointed to defeat the council of Ethel, to the intent that the Lord may bring evil upon Absalom. Now, Absalom has sinned. Absalom has sinned against God. Absalom has sinned against his dad, his father, David. Thou shalt honor thy mother and father. Absalom has sinned against the nation. And the counselors that are under Absalom have been set by God and God appointed the counselors of Absalom that God might bring evil upon Absalom and Absalom is going to hang in an oak tree by his lovely pretty long hair and Joab and, and some of his men are going to cast arrows or darts into his heart it's a slow death by hanging and by the darts God sent a counselor a good man to destroy a man and Hushai is a friend of David who becomes a spy for David under Absalom to find out, to record to David what's going on. <clears throat> and the evil here is death. And not only death, but it is long suffering. Absalom doesn't die by hanging. 
He's hanging in a tree. He dies by getting arrows or dart through his heart. And there are diseases. There are consequences in life that are long and dragged out. And they are evil. Now, Absalom, it's his own sin. <clears throat> Somebody gets lung cancer because of secondhand smoke, though they never did any tobacco products. They work around a smoking atmosphere, and it don't have to be tobacco. It could be other smoking ingredients. Wood fire, a firefighter has great chances of getting lung cancer. So eliminate the fact is that consequences of evil, <clears throat> well, it happened to you because you sinned against God. Absalom, yes. But a firefighter who gets lung cancer in an environment that he's fought many fires and, and had to breathe in the smoke. I mean, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But we can't point that finger to, well, lung cancer because you, you know, to, a, lot of, a lot of people got lung cancer because of not a tobacco product. That's why we got to get all 32 of these series of these messages all of them about evil so we get the full story and i said we're not even doing all the times evil shows up in the bible as you turn to first Kings seventeen twenty. so the evil as you turn to first king seventeen twenty, the evil of second samuel seventeen fourteen is a long slow death and imagine if Joab didn't show up with his army to quicken the death. First Kings seventeen twenty, and he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord, and said, "O oh Lord my God, that's a serious cry. O oh Lord my God, hast thou also brought evil upon the widow, with whom I sojourned by slaying her son?" This is Elijah, and he meets the widow woman and her son in a drought. He's been fed by the, the ravens. The water dries up. He goes into the city, and then here's this woman. She's going to gather two sticks, and her and her son are going to die. That's how desperate it is. Elijah walks up to her and says, make me a meal. I ain't got enough. Make a meal, and the oil that in, in the meal will not, it's not going to go away. It, 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 will, it will last during the whole time. Put faith in the Lord, and the Lord will provide for you. And she does. And by the miracle of God of the meal and the oil, she's able to take care of herself, her son, and Elijah. Now it's come to a point of time that the widow's son dies. Here is a mother sorrowing for the death of her child. And that's an evil. But the wages of sin is death. Didn't say the woman sinned. Well, we all sin. He didn't point at well, woman, you know, lack of faith or anything like that. He didn't say that. The fact is that that child was a sinner. We're all sinners. The wages of sin is death. Death is an evil. Before Genesis 3. Going into Genesis chapter 4, there was no ever to be death 
unto Eve and Adam ate that fruit that God said, Thou shalt not eat of the, the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but the day thou shalt eat thereof, thou shalt surely die. The evil of death is when Adam and Eve sinned against the commandment, the voice, the word of God. And there are evils for mankind when you do contrary to what the word of God says. Death is an evil that happens to all men outside the rapture, outside of Enoch and Elijah. <clears throat> It's an evil. And it's an evil brought on by sin. The wages of sin is death. And there is an evil when man violates what God says. Adam and Eve, when they sinned against God, they brought sorrows, they brought cursings, they brought death. <clears throat> Imagine when a Christian will not Go in all the world and preach the gospel. When you violate what God, Jesus Christ, said, imagine. Imagine when a Christian does not pray when Paul tells us through the Spirit, pray without ceasing. Imagine a Christian who violates the word of God again, Paul saying, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, study to show thyself approved unto God. When you are told to read your Bible and you violate the Word of God, there are consequences. And one of the evils which happens to all men at all ages, and we don't know when it's going to happen, is death itself. 2 Kings 18, 12. <clears throat> Death is an evil. It should have never happened. If Adam and Eve and all their children, if they had obeyed what God said, thou shalt not eat of the tree of the knowledge of, of good and evil, there would have never been death. Somebody disobeyed the word of God. And we have an evil called death. And when we disobey God and his word, we have an evil. We're going to die. The wages of sin is death. I had a guy one time who turned to 2 Kings 8, 12. I had one guy one time in my life tell me he'd never sinned. And we, we duped it out with words. And I finally told him to close that conversation. I said, you have your family tell me the day that they bury you in the ground. At a cemetery. Or they take your ashes, whatever, however they dispose of your dead body. You tell them to have me come. <clears throat> whatever they dispose of your body. I will come, I will look at your ashes, I will look at your tomb, I will look at your grave, I will look at where your dead body is, and I will say, you sinned. Hold on, I never sinned. Well, anybody who says they do not sin, John says makes, them, makes God a liar. And when you're dead, you die as a sinner. 2 Kings 8, 12. Has he said, Why weepeth my Lord? And he said, Because I know the evil that thou wilt do unto the children of Israel. Their strongholds will thou set on fire, and their young men will thou slay with the sword, war, and will dash their children and rip up their women with children or child. What you just read is murder, Murder and painful murder. They're going to die by the sword. They're going to take children and they're going to dash them against the wall. 
dash them against rock. They're just going to slip. Listen, that happened in World War II. It happened in World War I. It happened in Korea. It happened in Vietnam. It's happened in the Napoleonic War. It's this, this the brutality cru of war. And we see an evil in 2 Kings 8, 12. And the evil is not only are we going to die. 1 Kings 17, 20. Rebel, uh, Romans 6, 23. But there also could be an evil that we're going to die. Painfully. Not everybody gets a painful death. And then again, not everybody is going to die. You know, they, they go to bed, they close their eyes, and you be absent from the body and present with the Lord. I know of a, of a man who went out soul winning the afternoon or morning, and he came home, loves the Lord, saved, was out soul winning, sat in his easy chair, And then when his girlfriend came to, to see him later on that day, he died. Peaceful. Sometimes a heart attack is painful. I know of a story where a woman and her children involved in an accident, a fiery crash, and they died in that fire screaming. Emergency services were unable to get her out of that wreck. We see to the World Trade Center, there were people that died painful. The Oklahoma City bombing, there were people that died painful. There are people out west with with the fires. They they probably died. Though they say most cases in that they die first of suffocation by the smoke, but they say some people they burn to death. Death is not only an evil, but painful death. Is also an evil. And what we see in 2 Kings 8 12 is painful death is going to be brought by another human. Out of Hitler, though he never pulled a trigger, though he never lit a match, though he never tied a noose, though he never turned a gas switch, out of Hitler and his big filthy mouth of the devil, and I mean filthy mouth of kill the Jews, ordering the execution of the Jews, out of Hitler and his Nazi party caused painful deaths to millions. Besides the evil of dying, he added the evil of death. He added the painful killings of Hebrew, the children of God, Israelites. And I see pictures every once in a while. When I see the picture on, on Facebook, I will repost it. I, know, I forget what the complete story is, but on the wall there are scratching. Of the fingernails and the fingers of people grasping at a stone wall, whatever, I forget what it was. I, I repost it every time I see it. Of their, they're, they're, they're striving to live for life. And what they have remained and left behind for history today. Not only did they die painful death, but I can imagine scraping yourself against the wall to, to try to live. I can imagine that was crucifying pain also. I can imagine if you if you were to die by flames. 
And whether it be hot metal or hot wood, but your body being touched by the flames and by the, 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 the heated wood or metal of the flame would also be excruciating pain. People blame God, not not all not all God. This man has ill will, will cause pain to women who are pregnant, to children, to young men. There's an evil called death, and there is an evil called a painful death. The wages of sin is death. Fox's Book of Martyrs speaks about Christians who have died for the word of God, being burned upon faggots, being drowned in the ocean or lake. You imagine, I think it was Philip, where they tied his arms and his legs to two animals and they sent the animals in opposite direction and ripped his body apart. Don't you blame God. You blame Adam and Eve for disobeying the word of God. And you better look to the man that is coughing up a lung because of cancer, lung cancer from tobacco. Don't you blame God. You blame the tobacco manufacturers. When there is a wreck on a highway and innocent people are killed and dying in an automobile accident and they are suffering, don't you blame God. You blame the alcohol, uh, the alcohol uh, companies. You blame your government for allowing alcohol to be sold. You march that complaint all the way up to the White House, whoever is president, for allowing the alcohol and tobacco to be sold so we can tax it. Don't you go blaming God. Because there are more people that die from alcohol and tobacco than from an act of God of hurricanes and fires and lightning. And yes, there are natural causes. There are natural wonders that are caused by God. An insurance company calls it an act of God. But you also got to remember the Antichrist in the in the tribulation period is going to call fire down from heaven. In Job's case, there was a whirlwind and there was fire from God and a weather, a tornado from the devil that killed Job's children and killed his livestock. The devil can also cause weather phenomenon and not God. God allows it. Well, why would God allow it? Because Adam and Eve sinned against God, and God warned Adam and Eve, say, don't you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good. You ate the tree, now you're going to be cursed, now you're going to suffer, now you're going to have sorrow, now you brought death. That's not how I wanted it. First Chronicles 4.10 God, the devil, and man causes evil. You can't blame just God because it could be the devil. You can't blame just the devil. It could be you and me. But God allowed. And you can point your finger to God in heaven. And God's going to point his finger to Adam and Eve for eating that fruit. And God's not going to allow us at the judgment seat of Christ and the great white throne judgment. They will because of Adam. Well, yeah, because of Adam. But what would you do? And the harsh evil, as you go to 1 Chronicles 4.10, Jesus Christ, who is God. 
The gospel is he died. No, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, the gospel is he died, but what is the gospel? That Jesus Christ suffered and died. Jesus Christ, God, who was in the flesh, 100% man, 100% God. Jesus Christ suffered beyond what all men ever could suffer. <coughs> and don't forget, Jesus Christ went into hell and deposited our sins. Listen, when Jesus Christ went into hell, it, it, it wasn't an air-conditioned section for Jesus. He suffered worse than any man. For man. The evil of Adam and Eve's sin and the evil of our sin and death and suffering was placed upon Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ was 100% innocent, 100% holy, 100% righteous, and he still suffered and died. And went into hell and came out. <clears throat> so Jesus Christ suffered the evil of death, and not only the evil of death, Jesus Christ suffered the evil of a painful death, the crucifixion. And then he suffered not only that, the, the, the painful death, and death, but he suffered in hell, depositing our sins in hell. First Chronicles 4.10, Jabez called on God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldst bless me, make me happy indeed, enlarge my coast, and that thy hand might be with me, that thou wouldst keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. Evil causes grief. And God granted him that which he requested. Jabez did not want pain, suffering, and misery. But he will die. And who wants to have pain, suffering, and misery? You have to be sick in your head. And yet there are people out there who want to cause pain, suffering, and misery to others. And they say that that wimp, Adolf Hitler, killed himself. You wimp. You wimp. Why don't you let the, 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 the English and the American armies and the Allies, why, why don't you let them do what you did to the Jews, you wimp? And he's burning in hell today if he never trusted Jesus as his Savior. <clears throat> but inside a comfort zone, there is no learning. The hot hands remind you not to touch a hot stove. These things remind you, hey, don't mess with B. Now the evil here is there was a request not to have evil done to him. And God did not do evil. God said, I'll answer that prayer. But Jabez did not learn as Job learned. Job learned a lot because the evil of his suffering, the evil of the death of his sons, and the evil of the death of his livestock and his servants. Job did not have a comfort zone. Now, let me tell you something. I, I have not suffered as much as Job did. Okay? I can't be compared to, and nor do I want to be compared to Job. But I have suffered. I'm twice widowed. Both my wives died of cancer. Breast cancer and lung cancer. I can preach about lung cancer because I have emphysema thanks to my own stupidity of smoking cigarettes. 
I can preach about lung cancer because I had a wife who smoked and kept smoking beyond me trying to tell her to stop, beyond my prayers of praying to God for her to quit. And yet God answered my prayers. She quit two months before she died of lung cancer. And there are Christian men out there who are married, or who have never been married, trying to give me advice on my conduct and my sorrows, which they have never felt. And I got to say to you, I don't care what your position is, you can't say nothing. Now, outside of the fact is that my wife had a miscarriage and there is a baby in heaven that we named Philip. I have never had the death of a child. Now, I know a few Christians that love the Lord and have had children die. Don't you ever, dear, have Stiley Hayward give you advice? Comfort those are comfort. No, 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 no. Stolly needs to shut up because Stolly doesn't know what is the death of children. Miscarriage, yeah. The death of children, no. I don't need to say anything because I don't know what it feels like. My my wife had had a, had a back problem from MRSA, and I had to explain to her living. And she was in great pain, but I had to explain to her, there's no way I could feel your pain. I cannot understand what you're going through in pain because I have not suffered in that pain. All I can do is call upon God and, and reach out to God for you. I've had pain, but not serious pain. I had one time where, where I injured, I didn't break my tailbone, but I injured my tailbone. <clears throat> I remember being with my wife, Lisa, and I was in the living room, between the living room and the kitchen, and I, I kind of like jumped into, into her, into her body. I couldn't sit, I couldn't steal, stand, I couldn't kneel, I couldn't lay down. I, I wanted it just to float. <laughs> That's how, that's how painful it was. I couldn't do this or I couldn't do that. But I haven't lived months of pain. So don't expect me to give you any godly advice about pain. Though I've had pain, I have not had serious pain. Now you want to come to me about... What it's like to have, you know, to be a widow and missing your wife. Listen, there's another man. I, I, I talked to him. He's now a widower. I can relate to him. He can relate to me. Don't you come up, come, don't you come up with your wife. Or don't you come up with your husband into their conversation. And then, well, you know, we. I'm sorry. You're a fool. When you are in a comfort zone that you have not felt, you don't know what it's like. I know what it's like to drown, almost drown. And a life death situation. There's a place where I where I lived in Salem, Connecticut called Gardner's Lake. And I was out swimming out to the buoys, you know, go as far as you can. And they had one of those little swimming platform, diving platform. I was on my way back swimming. And I drowned. And the position I, where I was. And where that swimming platform was, the lifeguards would have never have seen me. I would have washed up on shore. After my family would say, hey, listen, Stiley's gone missing. 
And that would have been too late. And there was that swimming platform, and it was far away. <clears throat> and I went under. I was tired. I was it. That's it. And I took that one last hand. And God moved that swimming platform that my hands grabbed onto the ladder. It was not there. God put it there. I can tell you what it's like to near death. <clears throat> there are things I can tell you because God has stepped me out of the comfort zone. I can tell you with some cases with boils. I've had three boils in my life. Serious. I had one case that I was near death with infection. That I, I found a letter <clears throat> of my wife. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Sorry. And she wrote home to her family saying, you know, I'm coming back to Connecticut when Stiley dies. That's how near death I was. Had they not picked me up and brought me in the hospital, I would have died in bed. I thought I just had the flu. And what I'm saying about the comfort zone is, if we live our continual life in a comfort zone, Jabez, I don't know, they got jokes. And they got books and, and sermons about Jabez. Well, let's look at something about you. If we live in a comfort zone, Jabez, we're not going to learn anything. And now I can read through the book of Job. Listen, I had, I read from Genesis to Revelation all the way through. And I have had three times when I'm going through and reading the book of Job. And I almost fear, uh, right now I'm reading, I'm reading, the Bible all the way through, I'm in Chronicles. When I go over through the Bible and I come back through again, I'm almost afraid to go through the book of Job because I don't like, if I'm reading through my Bible, go through Job, I have three times where I'm going through the book of Job and I've had troubles and problems and I can relate to the book of Job because I am in troubles, I'm in problems. I have had a wife try to leave me a couple times. I've never been divorced, thank God. I can't tell you what it is like to be a divorce. And divorce is much different from a widow. Because a widow, David says, I shall go to the child, but the child shall not come back to me. If you're divorced, you can have possibilities of fixing your marriage and having your wife come home. The evil is the request that Jabez says, Lord, I don't want no evil. And God granted it to him. And nobody wants pain, suffering, misery. You can't say, God, not, let, not let me die. You say, well, what about the rapture? We don't know when the rapture is going to happen. I hope the rapture comes. My grandma kept saying she was going to go up in the rapture. She was going to go up in the rapture. She's in a graveyard right now. Paul looked forward to the rapture. He's in the graveyard right now. We don't ask for pain, suffering, misery. But we ought not to be asking for a comfort zone because the comfort zone gives us no learning. So we have the evils of death. We have the evils of a slow death. We have the evils of painful dying. We have the evils of a, of a child dying. And then we have the evil where we can ask God, God, give me a life of no pain, misery, and, and suffering. And God may answer our, our request. Like he did Jabez. And you can buy books about Jabez. I'm going to ask you something. What are you going to learn? 
I look back, I'll close with this. I look back <clears throat> as a husband. I was a great sinner during my first marriage. I repented of them sin. My second marriage, I was a sinner. But there, on the other side, there was issues. And if the Lord were to give me, and I'm praying for a third wife. And I've looked at those two marriages and I say, you know what? Here's where I need to make some changes. Here's what I need to do to do right. I would never learn that. If my first wife, Lisa, was still alive today, I may be still sinning with her and against her. Had I had she not gone to glory and looked at like, wow, you know, I was miserable. I meant not, I, I made her life miserable. I made the Lord miserable by my conduct. And then my second marriage, I, I I had discomfort. Hopefully the third, they say the third time to John. You don't learn. But sometimes you learn from your mistakes getting out of that comfort zone. We learn from evil. <clears throat> 